The second method has this fancy name. It sounds very impressive. And actually, uh, by rights, it's a, it's a method that only Extension 2 students need to know. However, it's actually kind of handy to keep up your speed as an Extension 1 student. Uh, it becomes really useful when you're solving related rates questions, which are things like, I, um, I'm pouring in an amount of water into like a, a basin, and the rate at which I pour in the water is related to the rate at which the water increases inside my basin, right? So I've got one rate here, I've got another rate here, they're related to each other. So this method I'm going to show you is kind of connected to that. It's called implicit differentiation. I think the name, honestly, was made up by someone who wanted to sound cool. It's like, I'm doing this, you know. Um, all it is is actually, it's just a dressed up name for the chain rule. That's why an extension one student, there's no reason why an extension one student can't learn it. Okay. What we're going to do is here, what unlocked everything was getting in terms of base data. Okay. When you look at this, that's not the only way to do it, right? Like you can get things in terms of exponentials, or remember we said the other side of exponentials is logs, yes? So this is another way to do it. So instead of reframing it in this way, from the first line, I am going to take logs of both sides. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Now, having taken logs of both sides, this is advantageous to us, and it can make progress because of one of the laws that I know. I sort of um, hijacked it over here as well. Namely that, not only do I know how to differentiate logs just full stop, but also over here, one of the log laws can help me out and get rid of what made this an awkward problem for. Which log law can I see that would be useful? It's the, it's the power, right? This power up here can climb out the front and become the coefficient, okay? So I can write this as x log x. So I've got rid of the x to the x problem, okay? Um, I got rid of it in a different way, but it's really just looking at it from another angle. Then you end up with a log y. Okay. Now, this is kind of progress, but then it's like, well, well, now what do you do? You have two choices. Okay. From there, if you like, you can actually do this. Do you see that? You see what I've done, right? So I'm using the same law, I'm just using it in a different way. I can rewrite this as an exponential equation, and then off I go. Okay. But here comes the implicit differentiation part. right? What I'm going to do now is, I have a function on the left, I have a function on the right. I'm just going to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. Just like I took both sides of the equation and I, did, I took logs of both sides, I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay? So I'm going to say, well, what's the derivative of this thing with respect to x? And what's the derivative of this thing with respect to x? Okay? Now, this looks weird for a couple of reasons, but we'll get to that reason in a second. Let's do the easy part first. The right-hand side is easy. Do you agree? The right-hand side is just, uh, it's just general. In fact, just because I did this question a minute ago, I know exactly what the derivative of this is. It was my inside function over here. That's not a coincidence, by the way. Okay? So being that I know what that is, I'm, I'm just going to quote it. Okay? It is just log x plus 1. That's what I will end up with after I do the product rule and simplify out. Now have a look at this guy. Okay? This is a bit more weird, but it's not that weird. In fact, I have the exact answer for this already written on the board. Let me just try and make it a little more obvious. <coughs> why, right? It's not just a letter. It's not just a premium. Why is a, um, why is a whole function, right? So when we try and make it obvious that something is a function, we say, why is a function of x? Yeah? Like, just using the letter y is just our short of shorthand for that because we get sick of writing it all the time. Okay? But really, this is the case. Now, do you see? that I already know what happens when you differentiate log of a function. I invoke chain rule, right? It's the function of a function, makes sense? So in fact, what I have here is y dash on y. Do you agree with that? Is that OK? Like, all I've done is differentiate a log function, and it happens that my function is called y. It could be called f, or it could be called Reynard, or whatever you want, OK? It's just a label, right? Rain out of X, that's a scary idea. Okay, now, <laughs> this is a bit strange though. Um, I'm kind of mixing up all my language here. Um, instead of writing this, I'm just going to write this over on the left hand side. The language that I'm using is more about d on dx, and I, I only introduced this bracket x thing, the function notation, made it really obvious what was going on. Instead of that over here, I'm going to write 
the numerator, which is the derivative of y with respect to x, that's what it is. And the denominator is just y. Like th that is my neater way of writing this. I only wrote it like this so you recognize chain. All right, now, let me just pause for a moment. This line here, this line here, this is where it gets its name, okay? It's called implicit differentiation because this is the derivative that I want. That's what I'm trying to solve for, right? I didn't get it directly. It just kind of appeared, right? Because when I use chain rule, it has to appear because I've got to differentiate the inside function. And I've made y the inside function, okay? So the dy and dx I'm after, it just kind of pops up, right? Now, I can solve this thing. I've got dy and dx already on the left-hand side, but to get it by itself, I better multiply both sides by y, y which happens to be x to the x, right? So in one fell swoop, ta-da, there's my derivative, okay, which you already knew. Now, which way do we prefer? Um, I think in this question, I uh, personally, I find implicit differentiation uh, kind of unnecessarily complicated, okay? Um, it works, obviously. Um, but this kind of, the sort of mental gymnastics you need to do here is kind of like, why? Why did you do that? It worked just fine using like lower stuff that you know. Uh, I saw this great, image the other day, which is that um, a good mathematician uses the strongest tool available to solve the problem. But a great mathematician uses the weakest tool available. It's a bit like, oh, okay, I need to like slice some bread. That's okay, I have a chainsaw in the garage, right? You don't do that, you use like this little thing, because it's all you need, right? This is all you need. You don't need to appeal to some like weird crazy stuff like this. Unless you want to sound cool and say, I'm going to buy implicit, okay? Um, I will mention, like I said, implicit becomes more useful later. Um, it becomes very, very handy where there's no, like, what did we do? What was the piece of knowledge that helped us do this? Do you remember? It was about exponentials and this identity, right? Or correspondingly, it was about log laws, right? Now, if you don't have exponentials and logs, if you've got trig functions, or, goodness, we'll get to those, inverse trig functions, they're much messier to deal with. There aren't such nice, neat laws that will pop things out into a form that's easy to differentiate. So you have to appeal to something like this. 